What's up guys, it's Timmy here, and uh, we're outside the pad I'm building right now. And today, I'm continuing on with the plumbing. It is almost done, at least the drain plumbing and whatnot. So I'll show you guys exactly what's going on here. So for about the last month and a half, been slowly knocking out all the plumbing in the house. So I'll take you through a little walk through here. So we got the toilet, we got the shower, we got the sink plumbed and vented all the way over to this side. And then over here we have the washer and dryer and a utility sink plumbed in right there. And then you can see all the piping for the upstairs bathroom, which is draining over into this room. And uh, yeah, let's continue upstairs. Show you guys the whole shindig. This has been a lot of work, big learning process, but we're getting there. We got our bathroom up here, shower, toilet, sink, all plumbed in and vented all through here and down here. And it also captures uh, sink upstairs. Comes over through here, all meets up, goes over this way to capture the bathtub, invent the bathtub, and the kitchen sink over here, and the rooftop deck drain right there. And we're gonna continue on to the last level. And finally, here's the tub. That's all plumbed in, as you can see right there, invented. Toilet's in, sink is in. The last step is to vent the entire house. So this is the vent pipe right here. Um, it's three inch vent pipe now, it was two inch down there. So it's getting bigger because it's collecting more vents as it goes up. So I've got to run this up into the ceiling over there. Got to catch this sink vent here. Then we're going to curve and go up and out, out the roof, up the spiral staircase up there, up the tower. So that's what we're working on today. Got a pretty good bit to do. Hopefully I can knock it out today if all goes well. It's a pretty nasty day outside. The wind was just cranking a while ago. It just stopped for a little bit. But uh, it's pretty warm luckily right now. It's raining the other night, so I'm not gonna worry about firing up the wood stove. Anyhow, once I finish with the plumbing here for the uh, vent line, we're gonna be moving on to the gas line for the house, which I picked up the other day. That's all right over here. I'm gonna be running flexible gas line. That way I can power all these additional heating sources like the uh, natural gas heater, um, the oven and range, the boiler downstairs, which powers the in-floor heating. So I get some work ahead of me. Since we're working with three inch pipe now, um, today I'm going to need, oh, it's in the car, I'm gonna go grab it. Um, I'm definitely gonna need a couple of 90 inch elbows. So let's get everything together, get it up here and start plumbing. I think we got most of what we need. This is the top of the sewer line here. So what I need to do is vent it. Since this is my vent, I need to connect these two together. Then I'm gonna run up the wall. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna use a vent 90, a three inch, and a Santee, a three inch Santee. So it'll look like that. Connect a little piece of pipe there. And then all I have to do is run up with my three inch pipe here instead of running two three inch pipes. Uh, this pipe is really expensive. Three inch pipe is like 50 bucks a stick of it for an eight foot stick. So instead of running two three inch pipes up the wall, I want to try to do just one. That'll save me money. So I'm going to keep this, uh, the height of this three inch pipe as short as possible and get it over to one pipe as soon as I can. So, so this pipe is loose. I'm going to glue that. But let's say that sits there. This vent 90 sits here. I need to make this piece. So we need a 12 inch piece right there. I do not have my tripod, but this looks insane, but these two vent pipes are so close to each other that the fittings aren't gonna work. So I have to bring this vent pipe away and then connect them together. So I've got a 45 and a street 45, and then a vent 90, and that should give enough room for this Santee right there to work and uh, have a little connector piece right there. So that's how we're gonna do it. So we're gonna want this piece to be about 29 and a half inches tall. Let's do some cutting. Perfect. There's a mark. Okay, got our piece. Set this into place here. And then we're gonna fit our three inch Santee on there. I like so. Beautiful, and see how this is just slightly higher than that? So that's our fall. Now we need a short little piece to go from there to there, and then we can continue with the three inch pipe up and out of here. Pretty cool. 
We're gonna need to be about, I'm gonna say five inches on that. Here we go, test fit it. Okay, this one, this one, five inch piece right there. Some draft fittage, like that. And right there, right here. Yay, happy times. Now we good. The reason I'm plumbing outside the wall is because there's gonna be a closet right here and then the sh shower and a tub plumb is gonna be right here. So you won't even see all this. This is cool. So now we don't have to run two pipes up and we had to connect these anyway. Let's glue this and then we're gonna keep on running. All right, all right. If you don't know anything about plumbing, this is all ABS, the plastic. Oh, it's really hard. Ugh, I need channel locks to get that off. Ugh. Gotcha. Yeah, it's just stronger, and you see it used in Alaska a lot. And we're gonna glue this side. Glue this one. Quarter turn. Oh yeah. Now I'm gonna get this other one. Okay. This side up. This guy right here. Move these up. Right. Make sure it's nice and straight. About there. And hold it. If you don't know anything about plumbing, this is ABS plastic and you use ABS glue. And uh, I don't know, I just like it better in PVC. I feel like it's way stronger. You see a lot more in Alaska. And uh, yeah, it's just really beefy stuff. It takes about 30 seconds for this glue to do its thing, and it basically chemically welds the plastic. So it's not just glue, it just like melt, it essentially just melts the plastic polymers together and welds it. So you get this nice solid piece. So we got that ready to go. So let's get all this glued up. None of that's glued yet. Just glue these guys. Plumbing is really not difficult, but it definitely, Take some thinking on what to do to uh, not mess up and have to go back and do it again. I had a local named Fiddler, um, awesome dude. He was helping me plumb a good bit of this. It was just me and him. And uh, he's still gonna be with me on some of the waterline parts of the project. But uh, he has been an absolute pleasure to work with. Really awesome, awesome dude. The layer. Okay. All right, so these main pipes are glued now. If you guys look here, there's less than a finger length in between these two pipes, which is why I'm having to bring this pipe like kind of over and up. That way there's room to have all those fittings in between the two pipes. Straight and lined up. And holding. And like I was saying, these bonds take about 30 seconds or so to do their thing. So let's let it sit here. And uh, it's also really important I am not a plumber at all. Like I was saying, Fiddler was helping me out with a bunch of this and I've uh, just been kind of learning as I go. But uh, I know one thing, when you're plumbing, take your time. Because the last thing you want to do is just start moving along and forget to glue one of these fittings and then your poop is literally flowing out of the pipes because you didn't glue your fittings. So I really want to take your time with everything. Okay, I'm going to glue these guys together and you guys can see here that Ben right there is gonna separate these two pipes enough to where I can put fittings in between them and then connect the pipes together if you guys listen really close you can hear the rooftop deck drain working right now very good we get our very last piece which will connect all this we're gonna do all this at one time so it's gonna be fast because the blue here And here we go, on the truth. On here, on here, push down. <clears throat> yes, woo, <laughs> here it is. So cool, I just plumbed something. So as you can see, there's just a slight drop here. This is the vent for the second floor bathroom. 
and this is the vent for the rest of the house downstairs. And I just tied the vents together and now we can run up to the ceiling with one pipe, 90 it over through the roof and then 90 it up and out of here. All right, you guys, we have to hustle. I cannot explain how lucky I am right now. I just went up to the rooftop deck and it is melted and I need to run this gas line under the rooftop deck and out through it for the rooftop deck fire pit. So check this out. I can't even believe it. This is like the middle of winter right now and the deck is melted. Check it. Oh yeah. How freaking awesome is this? Totally melted out. So the screws that I need to get to to remove the panels are right down there. You can see them. So rooftop deck fire pit is gonna be right about there. So I need to remove the panel where it's going to be and shove the rooftop deck uh, gas line hose over towards this and make it pop out somewhere in there. And uh, that'll be awesome. I'm gonna do that right now, let's go. Oh, this is crazy lucky. Can't even tell you guys. This is where it's gonna sit, right there. I cannot believe how lucky we are that the snow melted off. Like how would I have found these screws? It would have been so difficult. This is exactly why I invested in this bison rooftop decking system. So I can remove it if I need to. For this exact reason. If this was the deck already, I'd be screwed. I have to remove deck boards and all kinds of crazy stuff. But all I gotta do now is remove four screws and slide this over. It's such a cool system. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful. Isn't that so cool? This is why this deck system is super cool. It's all just like a slat system um, made by this company called Bison Decking. Um, they're called tiles, but it's wood. But everything sits on a pedestal, it's all floating. That way there's no penetrations through the roof because it's a flat roof, you don't want it to leak. So now what I'm gonna do is take that gas line and stuff it up under here and try to snake it back towards this. And I'll remove another panel there, and pop it out. Okay, we just got this one out. This is what's usually over the deck there, just solid ice. So I'll show you what we're having to do here, getting under these pedestals. So there, there's the system, can you guys see that? So we're gonna try to snake this way over that other end over there. Not easy, not easy. Right, let's see where we're at, we're probably pretty close. Go look over here now. See how close we are. Where's the pipe? No way. <laughs> yeah. No way. No way that was just that easy. Oh. Oh, thank you. Wow. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Here's my gas fire pit line right there. So right here we'll turn and come up and out. Okay. How lucky is that? So cool. Woo. All right. Very nice. All right. I did it. Let's go over here. Check it out. We done done it. That will do my friends. So this is where the rooftop deck fire pit is gonna poke straight out. Natural gas lines running under the deck. It's gonna pop out up in here. 
I'm gonna deal with this later. Um, I'm going to mount kind of a floor mounting flange here just so the pipe won't move around. It'll hold it nice and straight and where no edges will cut it. But it's looking great. No, nothing's tight or under tension there. Looking good. All right, y'all, I am gonna call it a night. It is uh, getting dark out, but we made some progress. Got some stuff done that we needed to get done. Heading back, I got a bunch of video editing to do. So let's go do it. Good day, everybody. I'm trying not to bust my tail. There we go. Can I get all this in one go? Ooh. It's really slick out. Absolutely beautiful day. What I have with me is a box full of receptacles. So today, I'm gonna start on the electric. Literally just finished up the vent and the drain plumbing yesterday, so I'll show you guys that in a second here. Ooh, it's slick. So we are outside of the pad. Absolutely gorgeous day here. But uh, obviously the outside is pretty much finished, so we're getting on into the inside of the house now. So let's go upstairs and I'll show you what we up to. do it with a drink too much first off i hope you guys enjoy this new camera i'm filming this with a sony zv-e1 i sold my a7 IV. if you guys look at my arctic videos um, it's an awesome camera killer camera took incredible photos and video but then it would just get out of focus all the time uh, i just didn't like the tracking on it this camera should track way better so i hope you guys notice that and uh, it doesn't take as good of pictures, but it's a lot lighter. It's just more of a video camera, so that'll be helpful. Anyway, this is what we're dealing with. We have an entire house to wire the electric for. I finally just finished all the drain plumbing all the way up through all the floors and out the tower at the top of the house. So that's good. The poop will go down and away. So we're done with that. Um, I'm installing gas line right now for all the gas appliances and the boiler downstairs and the, the stove and the Renais to run those natural gas heaters on every level. And uh, that'll be sweet. And then I'm gonna do the water line still, so we still have to do that. But I'm taking a break from all that today because I'm gonna start getting the electrical figured out. So I have a buddy, Mason, who is uh, old best friends with my, one of my best friends, uh, old Matt, Alaska Cabin Adventures. Uh, and I just bought Mason a plane ticket up to Alaska and he's coming for one week to just help me with all this. So he's a commercial electrician. So that makes me feel a little bit better. Someone that's actually somewhat certified to do what we're gonna be doing. But my dad and I wired the other house that's connected to this one. So I feel confident enough. So today, what we're gonna be doing is walking around and I have to lay everything out because only I know where I want stuff in the house, you know, where I want my light switches and receptacles and all that. And we're gonna go around the entire house, all three levels, all four levels, even on the rooftop deck. And we're gonna mark where we want these receptacles. And once I'm done marking them, I'm gonna go around and start nailing them in. That is our plan. The tools you need to rough in an electric plan for a house is as follows, as far as I know. Tape measure, square, marker. What we're gonna do is go around the house and I've got to mark everywhere I want a receptacle in this house. A lot of houses you go into, I believe code is seven feet in between receptacles, but I wanna go, I want way more receptacles than that. I wanna be able to plug stuff in everywhere because it's crazy, it's super cheap. Those electrical boxes are 99 cents, 98 cents each, so you know, why not give yourself options for power everywhere? I know code is about 12 inches off of the floor. That's how high the receptacle box needs to be, the bottom of the box. So the boxes are, let's see, uh, this one hand. So the boxes are about three and a half inches tall. So if the box is three and a half inches and I have to be 12 inches off the ground, that's 15 and a half inches. So I need to go around the entire house, measure 15 and a half inches off of the floor and I'll put a mark there and use this, that square to mark it nice and square and straight. And that mark is gonna be where the top of the box will line up with on the wall. So that's what we're gonna do now. Let's start in this corner because right when you walk in the door, you're gonna want a receptacle in the corner. So I have to power the heater right there, which is gonna be in the corner. So that'll take one of these plugs up 
and then I'll have a second plug for something else in the corner over here. So one thing you do have to think about is what kind of trim you're gonna be using, because you don't want this right against the edge if you're gonna put a three inch piece of trim and it would be in the way and you have to cut the trim. And also you have to think about uh, what you're gonna use for siding, like you're gonna use tongue and groove, you're gonna use drywall, because that's different thicknesses and you need to make sure that whatever you're gonna put on the wall, I'm gonna do tongue and groove. So uh, we're gonna put this box sticking three quarters out from the wall. That way the tongue and groove will be flush with it like that. So little things to think about. So we're gonna put our first box, I'm gonna say right here. We don't want it too close to the wall. So we're gonna measure 12 inches up and that's the bottom of the box. The box is three and a half inches tall, so we need to go to 15 and a half total. And I'm gonna mark that with my Sharpie, 15 and a half inches. And then what we're gonna do is use my square to make a nice square line to line the receptacle box up with. So it's a little bit tricky because need, you need a little square for this to be easier, but I'm just gonna space this one with a sponge like that. So it sits nice and square. And we're gonna mark a line and there you go. And I'm gonna write the letter R above it for a receptacle. That's 15 and a half inches off the ground at the top of that. And our box is gonna sit just like that. Then our next step, we're gonna line the top of the receptacle box up with that line at 15 and a half inches off the floor. And keep in mind, you want this box to stick out three quarters of an inch, because that's about how thick the tongue and groove is, a little bit less than that. I'm about three quarters of an inch out from the wall. That's it, let's nail it in right there. Beautiful. Top is about three quarter. Make sure bottom's the same. Nail the bottom in. Bam. And that is it. That is the first receptacle for power in the house. Pretty cool, super simple. And when you're laying your house out, it is a very good idea to know exactly what you're gonna have in your house. Like, where's your refrigerator gonna be? Where's your oven gonna be? Where are your couches gonna be? Where are you gonna have your little coffee table near the couches. Do you want a coffee table in the middle of the floor that has power to it? So maybe you need to mount like a floor mount, um, your TV. And uh, you have to think about those kind of things before you just start nailing these in. And uh, yeah, that's that's all I gotta say. So we get a lot of work to do, we're gonna keep at it. And uh, I'll be back with you guys once I get more of those nailed up. And also, if you guys look at my little plan here, that receptacle, the first one that I just nailed up is about right there when you walk in the Arctic entry. It's right there in the corner. I took my uh, house plans and I kind of just drew dots where I knew I wanted receptacles, uh, just so I can double check myself at the end, making sure I have them where I want. Leave a message, oh, I missed him. Thank you. Hey, what's up, man? I just had a quick question for you. You're probably up in the shop, but uh, give me a holler. I was gonna see how high to put the uh, receptacle boxes for the countertops. I feel like countertops are like 36 inches, so. Maybe like 48 inches or something they'd go for the kitchen. Give me a holler. All right, we're cruising along. Cruising, 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 look at that. Bam, bam, this is the area where I'm gonna have like a lot of cords because there'll be couches all back in there. Um, done one next to the wood stove, one behind it because I wanna do a fan back there. One right there in this area from maybe Christmas tree or whatever. Um, dining room table right here, so one on each side for cell phone plugs. One near the door. We're rolling. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, I just got, got out of the shower and got your message. Oh man, yeah, I just I just had a quick question for you. Okay. Um, I didn't know how high to put uh, the outlets off the ground for like a countertop exactly. You know, like the kitchen counter. I don't know how. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, you can't. From the floor, you, uh, you've got to know what the height of your countertop is. Yeah, I mean, I, the standard's like 30, like, isn't it like three feet pretty much? Like 36 inches? Yeah, 30, 36, 37, some, sometimes 35. Yeah. But what you want above the countertop, whatever that height is, about 20 inches to the bottom of your uh, receptacle. Okay, to the bottom of it. Yeah. So pretty high. It's, I didn't want to go too high because I don't want to get up into the cabinets and stuff, you know? Yeah, that's kind of a standard measurement. Just set it 20 inches to the top if you don't like like the way it looks, you know? But gotcha. the thing is, a lot of it has to do with 
being around the sink and water splashing and uh uh-huh. good deal man well that's uh, i don't want to keep right. you but no, no, that's all right call, I'm, I'm in serious now call me about anything because that that way you know yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. I'll let you get back to it. Okay, man. All right. All right. Love you. Bye. Love you. All right. We're rolling along. Got our kitchen pretty much done. One for the microwave up there. One for the garbage disposal down near the sink. I'm up high. Should be good. But now, we kind of ran into a problem. This is going to be the living room. I'm going to have a couch against this wall and uh, some corner tables and lamps or whatever I want. So I need receptacles in this, except the only thing is this is a shear wall. It's already been sided. So I need a receptacle there. So I'm going to come in the back side and cut it out right there, pre-marked it. And I'm doing that using this multi-tool. Yes. I've already got these marked for a three quarter inch off the wall. Aha. <laughs> Check that out. I was really, I don't want to say discouraged, but the house has been slightly overwhelming since I started it. If you guys look back at my videos, you'll see where uh, I built this house with my buddy Sam. It was literally just me and him building this entire place. Uh, the top of the roof up there is like 45 feet, 46 feet in the air. So you can imagine building something 46, 47 feet tall. Uh, just getting one board up to the roof is a huge ordeal. So it has been a challenge building this place, but really rewarding. And this is going to be so sweet when it's done. I've got the rock for the archway over here, so I'm gonna be rocking all of this. It's gonna be a really sweet rock arch, and uh, it's gonna be an awesome place. Outside looks crazy, but the inside's gonna be really cool. Okay, we just finished the living room. Now, we've moved on outside to the Arctic entry. All those are in. But now we're gonna get one on the porch here. Because, yeah, I feel like I'm gonna want an outlet on the porch, so. We're cutting in right here. Ha ha ha! Bam! Beautiful. There's a hole in this house. There's a hole in this house. Bing bing bada boom boom. Cooler, right? Wham! Bam! It is such a gorgeous night out. Gorgeous evening. Well, not bad. We did. The living room, the Arctic entry, and the deck. That's awesome. Up high and everything. Even got one from a TV, which is gonna sit. There's not much room for a TV. I don't want a TV being a focal point. I want a TV that'll hang on the wall on one of those crazy extending, bending arms and sit out of the way. And then it'll like fold out here and hover out here. That way you can sit back here in all these couches and watch TV and then push it away against the wall. I finished the entire main floor, including the kitchen, the bathroom, the closets, the front porch, the Arctic entry, we done. So I'm gonna go have a beer in the porch while there's still time, sun setting. Good day, everybody. It is incredibly icy and schlick. Today, guess what we're doing? Electric, let's go. The truck house is still in the shop getting a uh, new rear differential and gears, ARB air locker, and a new transfer case. I'm gonna get this stuff out and get upstairs and start getting ready. Oh, joyous joy. All right, let's go get the rest. So I picked up a whole bunch more boxes and switch boxes also, we're gonna do switches. Uh, some four gang boxes for a whole bunch of light switches and whatnot. Set you guys down so you can watch all the fun. So what we gonna do, I've got about 
hundred of these, maybe a little more than hundred actually. I already installed about fifty of them. Um, I'm doing tongue in the groove like I was saying, so I have to mark three quarters of an inch down these receptacle boxes to make sure I account for the tongue in the groove. Three quarters of an inch about. Slide this over, three quarters of an inch. And when I put these into the wall, I'm gonna line that up with the stud of the wall and that'll space this box out from the wall and then my siding will meet it and be flush. And we're gonna continue around here. Master bedroom, let's go over here towards the office. Slash open area. We're gonna want a whole bunch in the office here because, uh, well, you know, we'll be working right here a bunch. Moving along, moving along. These are all my pre-marked boxes, optical boxes, so I'm gonna line them up and do a weird reverse hammer thing. And some left hand hammering. I'm not even gonna pretend like I'm good at using my left hand to use a hammer. obviously get a lot of receptacles along this wall because this is the wall where I'm going to be editing all my YouTube videos. Looking out that view. And uh, yeah, I just need a bunch of power in this wall. Right here I'm going to have this couch, uh, six foot wide couch where you sit down and it turns out in a futon too so you can have guests sleep on here. It'll be open with cable railing. It's below right there. It's going to be pretty sweet. As you guys can see, we have receptacles all around now. Not bad, huh? Wish you could see the mountains. There's a beautiful view out here. Or right there, too. You can see the river right out that way. Okay, let's continue. We got the bathroom all ready. Got them all mounted up where the sink was. They're out here. Got them done in the stairwell down there and in the corner here. I figured almost another desk could be right here so you look out that window. Um, spiral staircase tower, I got one up at the top, one right there. And now we're moving on to the last spot, master bedroom here. This bedroom is pretty sweet too, so here we'll step back in the corner over here, but check out the view. It's like everywhere you look, there's the river, there's mountains all behind you, you just can't see because it's cloudy out. Whole bunch of windows. And I thought this is really cool. So these windows, this is the loft bedroom. So you can have it open to blow like this, or you can crank the windows close and have privacy or not listen to your bandmates snore. So that way when Johnny Lungs is sleeping right there in the loft, I don't have to listen to him snore. I just close this window. I thought that's kind of funny, but they'll be open 99% of the time. And then, yeah, I, I don't know. I just think it's pretty cool. This is the easiest part, obviously. One part's gonna be drilling holes through all of these studs and then pulling this stiff wire through the holes. Get like crazy carpal tunnel at the end of the day. All right, just like that, we got boxes everywhere. Look at them go, look at them go. Not bad at all. All right, that'll do. The one in the closet, I don't think I forgot anything up here. Let's uh, maybe one more on this wall. Uh, I kind of feel like I should. Ah, it's so easy too. Let's just do one more right here. Just to be safe, I don't know. All right guys, we just finished upstairs. As you saw, you can see the receptacle boxes from here all in. We've also finished down here, second floor, as you can see. So right now we're gonna switch gears and I have to install the light switches for all of the lights I'm gonna put around the entire house. And when I do this, I'm going to create a plan so that I know how to wire things together, especially on the more complicated switches. So for instance, I'm going to put this uh, four gang box over here. And uh, I've already marked it over here. It's a three way switch to the arch. So basically, I'm going to have my light box right there and I can flip a switch on and it'll turn on all the living room lights. But then when I go to bed, I don't want to have to walk all the way across the living room and turn the light off over here. I want to also be able to turn the light off over there. So I'm going to take another one of these boxes and mount it right here. 
and this will be the three-way switch. So I have to connect this switch near the arch and the switch near the front door together so that they turn all the lights off individually. So just little things like that. And then I have to take note on what parts I need to make this work and how to wire them up and all that stuff. So that's what we're doing now. Let's get to it. So this is a little bit interesting. If you notice, I'll be able to put a switch box right there real easy, but I also need a switch box here that's gonna turn on like my porch lights, Arctic entry light, all that. It's just natural to have it right here. You don't want it like behind the door. So I've got to cut a, cut a hole, get it marked out right there. It's gonna be our four gang box. Let's do it. I never mentioned it before, but it takes a lot of extra time to film building a house, much less building a house. Aha! I win! I win! Okay, that was fun and all. Now, get ourselves a hole there. So now we can fit our, fit our switch box in here. This will be fun, but it's gonna get nailed kind of like from the backside right there. All right, you guys go on that side of the wall, I'll go on this side. Right there. There she goes. Beautiful. Here's our light switch for the front door. And that gives room to fit the switch for this wall right here is the idea. So they're not touching each other. It's going to be close, but they should fit. Please. Our first two uh, light switches installed. Maybe not ideal having them right behind each other, but that's where they need to be because the door is going to open this way so you can't reach the lights back there. Maybe that's not how you're supposed to do this because I don't know, but to me it makes sense that when you open a door, the light switches, bam, 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 right there. And you close the door, bam, right there, lights. Walk in another door, push this door open, bam, there's your lights. So I try to think about my light switches that way. When you enter a dark space, as soon as you enter the dark space, you want to be able to reach around and find a light switch. That's what people do, I think. That's what I do. So it just makes sense that you enter a dark space, turn on the light. Enter a dark space, turn on a light. Right? Am I crazy? I don't think so. Let's keep going. So our next spot is going to be putting that uh, three-way switch. So the switch when you walk in the door right there, we need to be able to turn lights off there and also turn them off right here near the arch. Um, this is going to be a little bit tricky because I'm going to be rocking this arch. So I'm going to have all these sweet rocks going all the way around this entire arch. So I'm going to make sure that my light switch doesn't get in the way of the rocks. So I'm going to move it over a little bit, not right in the edge of the wall like you'd naturally reach for. So We're cutting out the hole for that right now. Switch hole. Will it fit? It fit. Okay. Very good. Yes. Here we go. Here's our switch box. It'll be like the kitchen light and can lights for under here. Then the can lights for the big overhead. Then the fan. You can turn them. Off and on in this side, off and on in that side now. Pretty cool. And pretty sure I'll be able to rock in the arch right beside it. Isn't that nice? Pretty cool. Well, guess where we're going? We're going up there. I'm just about done installing all of the light switch boxes. And then I'm gonna go back through and take inventory on everything so I know how much wire I need, what kind of wire and whatnot. So up here in the spiral staircase, I want to be able to turn the lights on and off from both sides simultaneously. So that's going to need a three-way switch. We also need a light switch for the rooftop deck lights I'm going to put outside on the exterior of the house. I'll show you guys. We're right here. It's so wild that it's actually melted out here. Um, this is my gas line for the rooftop deck fire pit which uh, I just ran under the deck the other day and cut all through the deck. And now it's mounted right there, so it's ready for the fire pit. So that's gonna be cool. Put that cone there so I don't run it over with the snow blower. But yeah, I'm gonna have a couple of lights up here under the overhang, so I need to be able to turn those on and off from 
in here. There's my Sharpie. Looking pretty good though, we're kind of getting there. All right guys, I officially ran out of uh, switch boxes. I thought I needed way more single gang boxes, but I don't I actually need like a lot of double gang boxes. But for instance, right here, I'm on the second, like the main floor. And if I want to go up to the third floor, I want to be able to turn on my lights right here, walk upstairs and then turn them off. But also want to be able to do that going downstairs, like turn on the downstairs lights, walk down and turn them off down there. So I need like a double box there. I need a lot of two gang boxes basically. So. I'm gonna make a trip to town, but right now I'm gonna draw out the plan for the house in this piece of paper so I know how many things I have and approximately how much wire I need to go buy, like 12-2 and 12-3 wire. It's kind of late in the day though, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it and uh, just head in towards town and go get the stuff I need to get. I really showed you guys the porch out here, the wing, but it's just nice. I sit out here. In a rocking chair and just chill. River's right over there. Cool spot to hang. I'll tell you one thing, I'll never install a garage door again the rest of my life. Thing was not easy to install. Ooh, slick. Good morning, everybody. We get an assignment today. So I'm gonna head down to my local library because they have a printer and I'm gonna print out kind of my basic electrical list. And then we're gonna go take inventory on exactly what I need so I can get all the electric stuff ordered because I gotta install that next week. Old trusty $600 car. You guys think it'll start? Watch this. Bam, never fails. Oh yeah. As you guys can see, the truck house is still in the shop. It's not here. There's some major work going on with it right now. It's getting the rear axle, rear differential completely rebuilt because I blew the gears up inside of it. Transfer case is getting rebuilt because that was failing. The input shaft bearing is failing. And uh, it's also getting new down pipes. So they're dropping the transmission and putting new down pipes in the back of the engine because exhaust is leaking into the cab really bad. I wasn't gonna do that this summer, but it's getting so bad you can't even breathe in there. I'm gonna keep the window open all the time. Anyway, um, truck's in the shop, so we're rocking. Rocking the old Toyota all track here. There we go. There we go. All right. Woo. That's awesome. So awesome having a local library. Um, yeah, just got my list right there. Just the beginning of the list. And I'm just going to mark off exactly what I need off to the side of that just to get me started. So let's roll. Okay, we're home. Getting a little bit of snow. Not bad. You guys can tell the snow is blowing really hard last night. Kind of blew up under the, the wing here. But entry porch is dry. Let the fun begin. You know what, I might start a fire and just warm it up in here. Let's do that. Get it toasty. Right. Sure has been nice having a good wood stove to heat everything up. Okay, one thing though, I'm gonna have to go get some firewood this summer. I did not get any this past summer because I obviously was building this place, so I just didn't have time. I'll get at least two or three cords this summer to get it going good. All right, all right, we'll let this get going and that'll warm the place up a little bit. You guys watch this so you can see how well the draft is. So I just started the fire, obviously. Watch this, close the door. Look at that pick up like that. Awesome draft. This is a uh, Blaze King Ashford 20.2, pretty sweet stove. It's got a, like, a catalytic converter on it, which has like 10 year warranty, it's supposed to be really good. But once it gets up to that active zone right there, you just switch over the converter to the back. It's got a thermostat back here to adjust the airflow and everything. It's pretty neat, pretty cool stove. And look at it, absolutely ripping already within, what, we just started this thing a minute ago? Look at it go. Anyway, this is gonna warm up the space, and then I'm gonna start working on the in-floor heating. Um, and I'm gonna start on this floor right here, uh, running 
in-floor heating tubing down every single floor joist. So it's gonna be a pain, but that's what we're doing. You guys can see I've been working on the gas lines in here. Um, you got the Renai heater, it's gonna be installed right there. Just auxiliary heat, which is right there. Uh, plumbing's all done, but we're running the gas line right now. Okay, here's where things start getting fun. It's pretty chilly in here, but it'll start warming up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is run around and you can see I've got, I typed this list up here, but uh, these are my receptacles. I just put the amps that stuff needs to be to power whatever the appliance is. So I have a 30 amp receptacle, uh, four prong for the washer dryer. That's a high power draw. Um, other things uh, like all the kitchen outlets have to be 20 amp. Uh, fridge has to be 20 amp. And then all the normal receptacles, like kind of in here in the living room, those are gonna be 15 amp, like bedroom, living room, all that kind of stuff. So if I'm within six feet of water, like right here and where the kitchen sink is, um, I've gotta do a GFCI, like a protected receptacle right there. And like the bathroom, I'm gonna have them near the bathroom sink. So those have to be protected uh, so they can break if the water hits them. And uh, yeah, so that's the first thing I'm doing. I'm gonna roll around and take note of the exact number of 30 amp receptacles, 20 amp, GFCI. Gonna write all those numbers down. So let's do it. Let's just start in this corner. So my first receptacle is back there behind the wood stove. It's gonna be a normal 15 amp receptacle. So I'm gonna mark a one beside the living room one. One right there. Um, move over one, there's one right there. So there's two. Move over there, there's another one, there's three. And I'm pretty much just gonna keep doing that all the way around the house. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Now things are gonna be a little spicier. This is probably the most complicated wall in the house because it's the kitchen. So there's different powered receptacles that I have to get for all these receptacle boxes. So let's get this going. Okay, so over here we have the heater. So that is just a 15 amp receptacle, it's nothing crazy. Over here we have the refrigerator, which I believe is a 20, yes, a 20 amp three prong. So if we're gonna mark that. Um, over here we have the switch for the overhead light fixture, so that's not one. This is a receptacle right there, so that's a kitchen receptacle, so we're gonna do 20 amp. And over here we get a receptacle right next to the sink, which will be here. So that is a GFCI protected receptacle and needs to be 20 amp because it's in the kitchen for blenders and whatnot. Down here is the receptacle for the garbage disposal, just it eats up all the nasty stuff in the sink. That needs to be 20 amp. Oh, there's one down there, what's that for? That is the dishwasher, that's the dishwasher. So that covers the kitchen. Oh, we got one up there. That's for the microwave, 20 amp. See, this is why you have to be thorough. Okay, Ugh. here's our list so far. And there you go, you guys get the picture. So I'm gonna go around the whole house, get all these numbers written down, and uh, then I'm gonna come back and do all the light switches. I have to know what I need for all the light switches that I've installed here um, all around. You can see I've already kind of marked. Uh, this is like a three-way switch to the arch. Get them all labeled right there where they're going. Kitchen can lights, uh, the living room can lights, which would be kind of like right up in there. Uh, the ceiling can lights the high ceiling, so they'll be way up there. And then the ceiling fan, way up there. All right, my friends, we are back. Back at it. So my bandmates are showing up soon. I'm gonna go pick up my, uh, one of my best buddies in the world, old Johnny Long's at the airport in probably three hours, four hours maybe. That gives me just enough time to start building the interior walls for the plumbing. So let's go do that. Let's see here. To take inventory of how many two by fours I got. I got a bunch down here too. Cool. Okay, so that's for the downstairs. I've got to finish this bathroom wall. I've got two two-way switches in a two-gang box, if I'm not mistaken. So one switch will turn on the light to go up the stairs, one switch will turn on the light to go down the stairs. So that's correct. We got my 48-inch mark. There we go. Yeah. 
So now when you walk out of the living room over here, you walk in here, you go upstairs, probably switch on the front light. Downstairs will probably be backlight, I guess. I don't know. That's where you have to start thinking in a very linear fashion. First floor, first switch, you know? Uh, the next floor up would be the second floor, second switch. So yeah, if you wanna go down, first switch to go down, second switch to go up, right? You guys are subscribed to my channel or if you watch my other videos, you'll notice that I'm out on the road half the time doing some adventure in the truck house or uh, off in the rivers or skiing or snow machining or whatever, playing music with the band. But uh, this house content, I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as you can. It might be boring to some of you guys, but some of you guys love it. So, so walking in the bedroom, I need a light for the closet over here and a light for the bedroom lights. So this is a two switch box. So now we have a switch for the closet light on the right and a switch for the bedroom light right there. So we're gonna put the other switch over here at the front door. In case you guys don't know, I'm probably going to be airbnb out this bedroom, which is gonna have its own bathroom. It's gonna have a couch and a TV and a bed. And uh, yeah, and then you get this sweet view of this huge mountain you can see from the couch right back there in the background. And uh, anyhow. You have your own private entrance right here. I'm gonna build some stairs, but uh, there's your own private entrance right there. So you'll come in and you know, all you do is walk out this door and you can walk out to the river, walk in the old Iditarod trail or whatever. So that's cool. But anyway, we need a light switch for the bedroom for when you enter the Airbnb from here, you wanna be able to turn on the bedroom light and turn on a porch light. So let's do that. So now, once you walk into the house, close the door, bam, bedroom light, porch light. So that's good. Um, I think that covered, oh wait, what's this? So we need a bathroom light switch to turn on the bathroom lights. We need a vanity light switch to turn on the vanity over the sink. And we need a ceiling fan vent. So when you're taking a shower, it pulls all the moisture out the house and blows it out with some duct work. So let's go get that. That means we need a three gang box, right? I'm by no means at all an electrician, but I'm doing it anyway. Sweet. Look at that fit. That's great. So yeah, now you're gonna walk into the bathroom, you open the door, bam, there's your fan light, there's your vanity light. So we got two more, these must be upstairs. All right, so two-way switch. Uh, we're good there. Don't need it there. Bathroom is good. This room's good. Where's our other two-way switches? Bedroom light. Yeah, I remembered, it was covered up. Let's go grab it. It's down here. It's the switch to turn on the lights for the stairs here, so you can see. She's hiding behind this piece of plywood. This piece of plywood right here, this is a piece of T111. Let me move it. Let's put it here for a second. That is going to be mounted on the wall right here for the boiler system. It'll be all these crazy copper pipes and bends and knobs and ball valves and pressure gauges, all this crazy looking stuff, uh, which is gonna basically control all my in-floor heating for the entire house and all floors all three stories so anyway this is our switch to turn on the stair lights and our switch to turn on the utility room lights in here so let's get that one in there must be one more oh uh garage door there we go did i forget so when you walk in the garage there's a light switch right here to turn on the garage light and over here i'm going to do a light switch to turn on and off the garage light and also turn on an exterior floodlight, which means, uh, sure, I should put it here. And there we go. When you walk in the garage or out of the garage, here's your light switch for the garage. And then there's a floodlight for outside to turn on all the outside lights around the house. Where to mount those? 